Welcome back, folks. Today we'll preview all the vehicles that's coming with the Swedish hybrid line. So this line is like the T57 line. It has light tanks going into medium tanks, going into heavy tanks. But it's a little bit more evenly distributed because there are more heavy tanks and medium tanks than the one T57 heavy or the two mediums, the T69 and the T54E1. So it's a little bit more balanced. But it's still a pain to retrain your crew from light tanks to medium tanks than to heavy tanks. So you cannot avoid it. But the process is a little bit more evenly spread out. So it does take a little bit more time, I guess. Whatever. But I already covered all the general contents and accessories that's coming with this patch yesterday. So click on the picture to watch. And tomorrow I'll cover all the tank destroyers. So 10, actually 9 tank destroyers with a tier 1 light tank. So here is the tech tree again. Now they forgot to mention the STRV L60 or the Landsberg L60. So this vehicle is likely going to be either another stepping stone at tier 2 getting to the STRV M40L or it might become a gift vehicle like the Toy D3 if you will. So like the New Year's gift vehicle. So we're not getting a Russian or German premium low tier light tank this year. Very likely. So they did not mention it. Might be a surprise. Also the STRV M4257 with the AMX 13 turret has been changed. And the main change is the gun. So they switch out the single shot for the autoloader. They buff the autoloader with 4 round clip. But I'll go over all the stats as usual. So here you can see the list. So we'll start from the STRV FM21 into the M38 into the 40L into the Lago, which is the medium tank, into the M42, the 74, the Leo medium tank, into the Emil, which is a heavy tank. It's like a medium, but you'll see, into Emil 2 and the Kremvog. So it's a little bit more evenly distributed than the American T57 heavy line because for that line you get light tanks to a medium which is the m7 which is a medium then into light tanks again wait is it the yeah into t71 and into a medium and back into a heavy so it's a little bit more fluctuating doesn't make sense right stupid crews so yeah it's a little bit more balanced but here is the tier one so the strv fm21 is basically a swedish made german lk2 so as you can see, Germany did have a few vehicles that particularly interested Sweden at the end of World War I. So Sweden was looking for vehicles to protect the king. So they looked towards the British with the Marks vehicles, the Mark I through four and five. But they put a pretty hefty price for their vehicles. So Sweden did not have the, the funds, insufficient funds, so did not buy it. They also looked towards Germany with the A7V, that costed a lot. So they looked towards a smaller vehicle and chose the LK2. So this is basically Swedish version of that vehicle. Looks kind of like a boot. <laughs> it's slow, it's small. It has 16 kilometers per hour top speed with a 55 horsepower engine. So the horsepower per ton ratio is 6.25. It has four two 14 millimeters of armor. Not that much armor. And the main armament for the sweet vehicles is a machine gun, not the 37 millimeter cannon. So it's not exactly the best vehicle out there. So this vehicle will be artificially buffed with the uh, German guns. So not exactly the Swedish machine gun. It has a crew of four and yep. It's a boot. <laughs> I mean, low tier vehicles. What could you expect? Whatever. So here is the tier 2. It's the STRV M38. So this is an evolution upgrade to the existing L60. So we're getting two tier 2s. And this is the normal vehicle. Whereas the L60 could become the gift vehicle or the premium vehicle. Either way, we have two. And they look pretty much similar. So this is an upgrade to the L60. 
includes all the advancements like torsion bar suspension, better periscopes rather than view slits, so better protection for the crew, and better mobility because the tracks are more you know durable than the boot than the LK2. So the main armament is a 20 millimeter auto cannon. The armor is only up to 18 millimeters, so not that much. But top speed is 45 kilometers per hour, so a lot faster. Weighs 9 tons with about 160-ish horsepower. So the horsepower per ton ratio is way better than the 6.25. So this is all right. So it plays more like the Toy D3 or like a medium tank, low tier medium tank, like the Panzer 38T. So you get the gist of it. And here is the STRV L60. So this is the early version, not the upgrade version, like the previous other tanks. So it's the original basis for all Swedish vehicles. So this is the original design by Lansford Company, designed all by themselves with all the advancements and whatsoever. So torsion bar suspension, periscopes rather than view slits, with the all weld, weld construction. So it serves the basis for future Swedish light tank designs. So it's their uh, T-34 chassis, if you will. So very significant. It's not that well armored. Only 13 millimeter at best with a 20 millimeter auto cannon or 37 millimeter Bofors cannon. Top speed is 45 kilometers per hour. So it's decently fast. Weighs about nine tons with 160 horsepower engine. So horsepower per ton ratio is pretty good. It's a light tank after all. And here is the tier three, the STRV and 40 L. Now this is basically the third version of the L60. So they modified the L60. As you know, it's the basis, so the T34, and they modify it into T3485. So that's the analogy, but they just upgraded with more stuff. So the armor is roughly the same, still has 37 millimeter cannon, crew of three, better top speed, Engine is not as good, but it could have applicate armor. So that's what's good about the L version. There's also a K version for the M40, so the M40K, but that thing has 50 millimeter of armor without the applicate armor. So this thing could have space armor. So we'll see what Wargaming does with it, but without the space armor, it's only 15 millimeters. So not that great. But who knows? So here is the tier four. It's a medium tank now. It's a Lago medium tank, which is basically a upscale version of the L60 light tank. So Sweden could not get hold of any other medium tank designs during World War II because the treaties and, you know, you have to remain ne neutral in the war. Otherwise, you will be targeted by different countries, right? So they cannot get hold of medium tank designs. So they took their L60 light tank and just expand it, make it bigger. So turn it into a medium tank basis for future medium tank designs. So the armor was up armored to 34 millimeter, has a 47 millimeter or 57 millimeter, crew of four, 45 kilometers per hour top speed, two 140 horsepower engines, weighs about 20-ish tons. So the horsepower per ton ratio is still like the light tanks, but it has a little bit more armor and a bigger gun. So performs a little bit better against other tanks. Tier five, we have the STRV M42. So this is the upgraded version of the previous Lago one. So the Lago medium tank. So this is known as the Lago two, three and four. It has a little bit better, well actually a lot better guns. So if, yeah, the 57 was good, but it can carry a 75 millimeter or 105 millimeter howitzer. So yeah, this vehicle was decent. It was decent for the Swedes. But what's impressive about this vehicle is it could have, it actually has 15 degrees of gun depression for a medium tank. So it's like the Sturry Mill or the Dicker Max, those German tank destroyers that pokes down from a hill with 15 degrees of gun depression and just shoots you. So yeah, you can't haul down 
amazingly with this vehicle. Just insane cliff. Just hang on to hang onto a cliff and just pokes out and shoot at you. Insane gun depression. So armor is 55 millimeter at the best. Has either 57 millimeter gun, 75 millimeter, or a derp gun like the Sherman's. Crew of four. Top speed is 42 kilometers per hour. Various variants of this vi various variants of this vehicle, ton twister, with different engines. So the horsepower per ton ratio varies between 14.44 to 18.22. So it could be pretty quick. So yeah, the main power of this vehicle is the gun depression and just abusing it on the battlefield. And tier six, we have the upgrade, the STRV M74. I was about to say the AMX 13 series, but this is the final product after you know analyzing the designs from the STRV M42 slash 57, the AMX turret. So they chose this vehicle, modified the M42 chassis to fit a better turret with a long barrel, 75 millimeter. So it's yeah, like a bulldog-ish, but it has the same capabilities as the M42, which is the 15 degrees of gun depression. So, yeah, it's a more deadly gun with 80 millimeter of armor now, so a little bit better protection. Same top speed, slightly better top speed. Horsepower time ratio is 15.11, so it's okay, but yeah. 15 degrees of gun depression with a oval shape or lozenge shape turret so you will bounce a lot of shots with 15 degrees of gun depression so these vehicles are tremendously OP if they're hauled down and it has a long barrel 75 so the penetration is around 150 ish in the game's terms so the penetration is pretty good so yeah, exciting, very exciting. And here we have the other tier six, the premium STRV M4257 alternate A2 version. So sticking the AMX 13's turret onto the M42. Now I already covered this vehicle with a leak episode about two months ago, but they changed the stats. So you can click on the picture to watch the previous leak episode talking about the history and whatever. But here is the change in the stats of the gun. So you can see they nerfed the gold shell penetration by 7 millimeters. Not that much. It has a 4 round clip now. It was 3 round clip, so that's a buff. It buffed the DPM, it buffed the rate of fire, but the reload is the same. They did not specify how much time takes between each shot, so the intershell reload. But I'm presuming it's two seconds or so or at least 2.7 seconds it could be something like that but it's all right accuracy is 0 0.336 which is like the single shot version that's very good that's way above average the average is 0 0.36 i believe for tier 6 mediums so this thing could snipe with an autoloader yeah that's insane Aim time is not that bad, 2.21 seconds, which is buffed from 2.4. Same gun depression, same elevation. So yeah, it's a decent buff and this vehicle might be viable now. So it's like a T-54E1 at tier 6. Now if this thing has 200 alpha with the 75mm, it would be kind of broken because you have 4 shells and if you spam gold, that's 200 millimeters of penetration. That's 600 damage in a clip. So 600 damage in six seconds. It, kind of broken, right? So yeah, 500. Yeah, if it's 200 damage with 200 millimeter of penetration, that's 800 damage per clip. That's instant kill for any other tier six. So yeah, 150 alpha is balanced, but four shells. So. It's a lot more viable now, but the other stats remain the same. So this vehicle has, I believe, if I recall correctly, 13.58 horsepower per ton ratio. So it's not that fast. And the armor is no armor. So 
in essence, a T-54E1 at tier 6. So if you like it, it's a premium vehicle to train your crews. So still pretty good. And makes all the credits as well. Here is the tier 7. Now we're starting with the paper tanks. So the Leo is actually a paper tank that was supposed to be the upgrade to the M42. So the Swedes were thinking about a 30 ton vehicle to replace the M42. They have two versions. One is a medium tank version. The other one is a tank destroyer version. Also came out of those were 25 tons and a 20 ton version. So the Leo is the 25 ton version. But yeah, the army decided that there were no more need for 30 ton vehicles and the projects were canceled. So that's the main reason that there is no 30 ton tank destroyers or 30 ton medium tanks. But it's basically a paper tank. So I'll take a better look right here. So it looks a lot like a TVP VTU, right? With the cupola and the essence of the shape of the hull. But it's not as square boxy as those Czechoslovakian vehicles. And this thing could have amazing gun depression. It's supposed to have 10 degrees of gun depression and 25 elevation. So sniping vehicle like a Leopard 1 at tier 7. So the main armament is a 75mm, but this thing could have a 105mm long barrel gun. So it could be like the T-34-1 without armor, but with gun depression. So is it interesting? Yes it is, in my opinion. The best armor is 70 at the front, 35 at the sides, and 20 at the rear. So uh, don't expect to bounce a few shots, but you could get lucky. Top speed is 55 kilometers per hour with a 410 horsepower engine, weighs 25 tons. So the horsepower per ton is 16.4. Now, usually, as always, Wargaming will artificially buff or nerf the vehicles based on other tanks of the same tier. So just take my stats with a hint of salt, if you will. So this thing could be like, I don't know, 500 horsepower engine that has 20 horsepower per ton ratio. So it could be a Leopard 1 at tier 7, which we don't have other than the T20, but the T20 hmm, has low DPM uh, and not that accurate. So we'll see, but the 105mm on a tier 7 medium tank rivals the Chinese vehicle. So big alpha, very big alpha. Other vehicles have 85mm or 90mm, whatever. This has 105 so very interesting and tier 8 is the first heavy tank so this thing ooh, this thing is a doozy so the emil 1 is a continuation of finding a replacement for the m42 medium tank but at this time a lot more technologies has been advanced so you have better technologies for your vehicles such as the gyroscopic stabilization system or the autoloaders so you have less crews cram into the space but yeah this is basically smaller than a t44 has a smaller clearance of 2.46 meters so it's slightly smaller than a t44 has 14 degrees of gun depression but it has a 120 millimeter autoloader <laughs> that fires high explosive tank into tank for tanks or high explosive shells. The main reason for this vehicle is it could play as, or it could support infantry or be as a tank destroyer. So serving two roles. But the main problem that this tank were never implemented or produced was because the problems with producing the ammunition for these vehicle. And it's pretty costly. So yeah, same old history, but it's crazy when you think about it. So smaller than or shorter than a T-44 with 14 degrees of gun depression with 120 millimeter autoloader at tier 8. <laughs> what? I mean, this thing will blow vehicles like the AMX 5100, T-32s, IS-3 out of the water. Just insane. So you could not have more than three shells for the autoloader 
Otherwise, you instant kill any other tier eight with a single clip of the drum. Yeah, this vehicle is pretty OP for tier eight, so they have to artificially nerf the hell out of this vehicle. But here you can see the armor for the turret and the hull, which is not bad for a heavy tank. It's all right, but it's not really a heavy. It's like the AMX 5100. So like the French heavy tanks or the T57 heavy, those are basically large mediums. The main armament is 120 millimeter L40 autoloader. It also comes with a 105 millimeter long barrel, so L67, but it's pretty crazy. Crew of three, top speed of 55 kilometers per hour with a 550 horsepower engine, so it weighs about 30 tons. So the horsepower per ton ratio is also pretty good. Good top speed, decent armor, crazy gun. They have to nerf the crap out of this vehicle to balance it. Just insane. At tier nine is the Emil II. Now this is less interesting or less OP than the tier eight version because it features the oscillating turret, suppose oscillating turret from the AMX 13 or the AMX 50 series. So it doesn't have the 14 degrees of gun depression. So more like eight, but it has a little bit better armor with different versions and still carries the 120 millimeter autoloader. But in the records, they are suggesting that this vehicle could arm itself with a 150 millimeter autoloader, smoothbore autoloader. So it's highly like unlikely for Wargaming to implement a large caliber smoothbore gun because the main reason for that is it introduced a lot of OP shells like APDS, AP Fin Stabilized Discarding Sables, Sables, Sabots, also missiles in some cases. So yeah, 150 millimeter autoloader that fires <laughs> Fin Stabilized Discarding Sables. I can't see the same, you know what I mean. So yeah, that's insane. But yeah, it's highly unlikely that Wargaming will implement the gun. So we're sticking to likely the tier eight version of the gun. Top speed is 56 kilometers per hour. Different versions have different horsepower. The later versions utilize American built engines. So it weighs about 40 ish to 35 ish tons. So horsepower per ton ratio is around 15 or so. But yeah, it's like the AMX 5120 in the default form. But if Wargaming goes crazy and implements the 150 millimeter autoloader, it might be insane. So we'll have to see about the actual stats of this vehicle. And tier 10 is the Kranvog. The Kranvog, Sam is N, all right? Kranvan, like Vince Vaughn. All right, Kranvon, there we go. A lot of people give me shit about pronunciation. Fine, Kran Van, Jesus. But it's basically a false name to confuse spies. The actual name of this vehicle is the Mil 2 Alternate 3 version, so the Mark 3 version. So what they did to this vehicle is basically improving the armor at the front with the same gun from the Mil 2, the 1952 version, with better engine. So American built 810 horsepower engine, weighs about 50-ish tons, so better horsepower per ton ratio, and slightly better armor, slightly, but not that much. So yeah, it's all right, but in order for the tier nine and the tier 10 to be somewhat interesting than the AMX 5120, these vehicles have to have the 150 millimeter autoloader, but it breaks the game. So either you have a repeat, a replicate, or a insane vehicle. So I don't know how they're going to balance these two vehicles, but we'll have to see. So final thoughts and opinions. So it's a hybrid line with more leaning towards the mediums, like the medium like heavies. So like the T57 heavy, like the AMX 5100, it's not really heavy tanks. It's large mediums with guns, with a lot of guns. So it will be a pain to start new crews when you're shifting different tank types. So shifting from light tanks to medium tanks to heavy tanks, 
you have to retrain the crew or just get a new crew without all the skills and perks so it's going to be a pain the best analogy of this vehicle tech tree is a mix of american slash french vehicles you have some armor to bounce some shots but do not rely on it but you do have the gun depression so take full advantage of it some vehicles have auto loaders so take full advantage of those and it's basically t54e1s or leper ones of low tiers so strength is gun depression gun selection and above average mobility the weakness is the mediocre armor and might suffer from hidden crippling soft stats like terrain resistance accuracy oh, accuracy ish aim time or dispersion bloom with the gun so we'll have to see with the actual stats so should have consistent strength of gun depression handling and horsepower per ton ratio and mobi mobility should be but it kind of feels like the Czechs the Czechoslovakian mediums without the outliers like the T-34-100 or the TVP VTU because those vehicles do not have the gun depression unlike the other vehicles so kind of different low tier light tanks are mostly similar so should play like medium tanks coming afterwards and might be a branch of Leopard 1s with either good gun handling or autoloaders or both who knows so is it worth it well wait until the full stat leaked of these vehicles so i would like to see how wargaming is going to balance all these things especially with the tier 8 because that thing is op has low clearance it's a small short vehicle that's smaller than a t44 has 14 degrees of gun depression with 120 millimeter autoloader if it has more than three shells it instantly kill any other tier 8 which means it will break tournaments and clan wars and any competition based gameplay whatsoever <laughs> it's insane but yeah there are several crazy gun depression vehicles of 15 degrees the m42 and the m74 so yeah it's like playing with the crazy sturdy mill except you're not a tank destroyer you're a little bit more mobile and you carry more than 12 shells so that's a plus and tier 9 and tier 10 might be kind of average mediocre unless wargaming do something ridiculous giving it the 150 millimeter autoloader smooth bore but it's currently heavily resembling the 5120 so yeah it's not balanced but for this whole line it kind of feels like another t57 line except it has better gun depression or maybe better mobility or better spread out of the vehicle class so who knows but that's a preview of the swedish medium tanks and heavy tanks with the light tanks at the early beginning so thank you guys for watching this video hope you guys enjoy it i'll see you guys next time peace thought to myself i'm okay i don't feel a thing but in the end there's a drag weighing down on me running on ahead again you seem to escape every step never touching down couldn't do a thing but stare without a sound to a tree